Well, it's official now. Ben Roethlisberger is retired from the NFL. He made his announcement Friday morning or Thursday morning, excuse me, letting the world know that he was done from foot from football. But we all knew that was coming. Still, there's a lot of memories. There's a lot of legacy. There's a lot of just emotions tied in the history that he had with the Steelers organization, the two Super Bowls that he won and all the victories and great times he brought for Steelers fans. We're going to talk a lot about that in today's episode, the legacy that he built, the legacy he left behind and tried to pass on to the new era of Steelers that will come after him. Joining me today to talk about that is Jenna Harner from channel 11 WPXI here in Pittsburgh. We'll be talking about that and giving you our predictions for conference championship weekend in the NFL. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. Like this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our daily content. Joining me, as always, on Fridays is the wonderful, the amazing Jenna Harner of Channel 11 WPXI. Jenna, welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure. Chris, it is my favorite part of Fridays, and you are wonderful and amazing, too. <laughs> so I am just glad to be in your presence on this Friday. Well, there's certainly a presence that won't be around the Steelers locker room anymore, and that's Ben Roethlisberger. He announced his retirement Thursday morning. Uh, I did a short video about it, but I wanted to make sure we, we had to do a whole episode talking about it, right? It's just this guy's legacy, the franchise quarterback, what he did for the franchise and the plays that he brought. There's just there's just so many moments that people can point back to and say, hey, that was my favorite Big Ben moment. This was my favorite Big Ben moment. But I, I think one thing that gets lost sometimes in talking about Ben Roethlisberger is one th people often talk about like you know the greatest greatest quarterbacks of all time, and certainly he's not that. You know, Tom Brady gets that. You know, there's your Joe Montana and guys like that, and you know other you, you can even say Peyton Manning. But there's so many things that he still achieved that put him among that class. And I wouldn't say he's the greatest, but he's one of the greatest. And I, you know, I think a better way of saying it, he wasn't perfect, but he was Pittsburgh. He was blue collar. He was tough. He fought through everything. And Jenna, I, you see all the emotions pouring on, not just from Steelers fans, but from former Steelers themselves. And it just, it shows you how many people he touched with his play over in a long 18 year career. Yeah, I mean, just the people he's played with, the teams he's played with. I think that was one of the things that was kind of the most fascinating thing to me because much like you, you know, we grew up watching Ben Roethlisberger, which I know some of our viewers and listeners may not want to hear. Uh, we're young, okay, guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't control when I was born. Um, but, you know, this was kind of a quarterback of generations. I mean, I love how you – it was one of the final – um, uh, weekly press conferences that we had with Ben. And you kind of mm -hmm. asked him, you know, you've been a quarterback for a generation of high school football kids. I mean, yep. all these high school football players right now, so many of them within the last 10 years, Ben Roethlisberger was all they knew as yep. the Steelers quarterback, his style of play, what he brought to this team, the Super Bowl championships, everything he was able to accomplish, you know, all the records that he broke, all the, you know, top 10, top five lists that he's on, all those accolades that he has. But this was a guy who, like you said, also, you know, embodied Pittsburgh. And I think, you know, when I came here, I mean, growing up, obviously, especially in Patriots territory, you kind of hate everybody. Um, me personally, as a Giants fan, I'll say you hate <laughs> everybody. You hate Tom Brady as kind of much as, you know, some of the other, the Pittsburghs, the Buffalo, you know, yeah. all the teams that, you know, the Dolphins, you know, the Miamis, all those. Um, but this is a city that, you know, just rallied behind Ben Roethlisberger for what he was able to do for 18 years. And we saw it so much, especially, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think the last 
home game at Heinz Field, that Monday night game against the Browns, where, you know, the roar of the crowd as he came out of the tunnel for one final time. And, you know, afterwards, the thank you, Ben, let's go, Ben chance. I mean, you could, we could hear those from the press box and it is hard to hear things from the field in that press box. It really was. I mean, Jenna, I remember we, you and I sprinting down the rotunda so that we could get from the press box level Yep. All the way down to the field because we wanted to get the the field view. Like, what did the what did the fans sit low? And when he comes to that tunnel, just getting the 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 video and the view of what that moment was like for his last yes. entrance into Heinz Field and how nuts fans went for him. And, and I think part of what when we're talking about he he's not perfect. He's Pittsburgh. Is that. Pittsburghers, they always love the tough guys. They don't like the pretty boys. They don't like the guys that are glitzy and glammy and they're just really great at what they do. They like the tough guys. They like the guys that no matter what the situation is, they're going to go in, they're going to get dirty, and they're going to make things happen. And that's who Ben Roethlisberger always was. He may not have had the best stats, and there were times he did. I mean, the guy finished with 53 game-winning touchdown, game-winning drives. He fin- finished with uh, the most 500-yard passing games in NFL history. I think he's tied for the the, 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 the most six-touchdown games in NFL history. He, he's He's had so many achievements, but the moments that people remember are him getting his nose broken by a loading nada and then throwing a game winning touchdown, shrugging off Terrell Suggs as he throw as, as he as he saves saves an entire game by throwing the ball away. Uh, you know, taking shots, running backwards as he needed to chase a Colts defender down and tackling him by the shoestring when a play that he shouldn't be he shouldn't have to make, but here he is saving the team and keeping them alive in the playoffs. It's what he did for so long that defined what it meant to be a tough quarterback in the NFL and a Steelers quarterback in the NFL that I think so many people are like that are able to say that's my quarterback when they watch the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. And it's just kind of fascinating too, especially now hearing, you know, some of these younger quarterbacks being described as Ben Roethlisberger, like from his early career, yeah. having that toughness. I think I'm trying to remember what, which broadcast or something I was listening to the other day, but you know, they were talking about, you know, Joe Burrow is very Ben Roethlisberger, like in his <laughs> toughness. And for something like that, I mean, the clear impact that Ben Roethlisberger made not only on the AFC North, but on this game, on the NFL as kind of a whole, like you said, you know, his entire career wasn't perfect. It wasn't picture, you know, it wasn't entirely pretty in all those ways, but those are the moments that people are really going to remember him for those gritty, tough blue collar. I am Pittsburgh. I am a Steeler. I mean, I know that you were there too, and this kind of sticks out. Um, but one of his most recent press conferences, actually it was the Kansas city chiefs press conference, you know, his, Mm -hmm. what ended up being his final game. He basically said, um, to the, you know, kind of, to the extent, you know, I I was kind of born to play for this team. He goes, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, God had in the cards type thing. He wore a black and gold tie on draft day and, you know, ended (laughs) up having the, uh, the 18 year career he did with the black and gold. And he said, he's kind of a stealer through and through. And he just, you, he, he really embodies kind of what this city is and I think especially for someone like me coming into the city and being so fresh you could see that immediately I mean no these last two seasons I'm sure clearly have not gone the way that they had planned that he had planned but it was one of those things where you know you still saw him you know being that tough gritty quarterback obviously towards the end of his career but his accomplishments are also just one of those things that a lot of Steelers fans are going to look back on and say, wow, how lucky were we to have this guy for the duration that we did and for him to do what he did for this franchise. Certainly. I mean, and like you said, it seemed like he was born to, I still remember the day of the NFL draft when it was time to pick him, not easy wearing that tie, but one of the ESPN reporters comes over to him and is asking him questions while the Steelers are on the clock and mid interview, he gets, he picks up his phone. He says one second. And then he says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I would coach. And then everyone's like, oh, that's the guy. Bill Cowher just picked him, like like right there on television. And from that moment on, he goes on to win 13 straight games as a rookie, uh, leading the Steelers to a 15-1 and record. The next year, he gets Jerome Bettis, the ultimate send-off Super Bowl victory to end his career in his hometown of Detroit. Um, and then still, like we talk about greatest moments of all time. I know that people want to look at like you know certain moments where he was really excited. But to me, there's no more pinnacle Ben Roethlisberger than – the, the Super Bowl 43 throw 
to San Antonio Holmes over three defenders in the back of the end zone to win the game. That was like the drive. That was the play that he was drafted to make. And sure, could he have met one more? Maybe in, in Pittsburgh history. But the bottom line is he gave you several of those moments. I mean, there's several, like I said, 53 game-winning drives. The only quarterback with more in NFL history is Peyton Manning, and he only had one more. So to me, that's what embodies Ben Roethlisberger, his will to get it done regardless of the situation. And again, that's what made him a Pittsburgh Steeler legend. We're going to keep talking about Ben in a bit, but first I had to get talk to you guys about get about get Upside. Hey, Steelers fans, this is Chris Carr with Incredible App. Everyone who buys gas needs to know what it's called Get Upside. My listeners are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app on the App Store, Google Play right now. Use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill-up, and you'll get cash back. Don't pay full price of the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the, the app for free and use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two or $300 a year in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN for, for, to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Again, there's promo code TOUCHDOWN on the Get Upside app. We're also brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue the march through the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all your best sports wagering action this season. And in the new year, with new updated desktop and mobile websites, you can get you can sign up today and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure you use the promo code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N Locked On, and you'll be able to get started with your new site at BetOnline.ag. From football to basketball to hockey to boxing, the UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season at Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet to wager on all your favorite sports at Bet Online, where the game starts. So, back to back ad reads means we keep it rolling, Jenna. But keeping it on Ben Roethlisberger because this is a this is a Ben day. You know, the, the you know, Thursday he retires. We're doing the Friday show, but there's no doubt in my mind that Steelers fans you know, appreciate Ben Roethlisberger and appreciate, you know, what he's done. But one thing that, it, you know, it, it seemed reciprocal was that Big Ben, like you said, on the night uh, of, of his last home game, he appreciated Steelers fans. I mean, yeah. how long he took to go around the field and sit on the bench and just, and just take it in and, and absorb it. He realized that he was so beloved in this city that it just – that I think that that's a special bond and a special send off that few players in sports history get because we don't know we usually don't know who's retiring when we don't know if this is going to be their last game and to get that moment I thought was so crucial and such an embodiment of what that relationship what what that relationship has been for the Steelers and it was kind of one of those things that it almost felt perfect right you know yes. monday night football a win against the cleveland browns to mm -hmm. keep the season alive like it really just kind of had that moment where it was like oh yeah no this is something really special and you know after that game in the post game press conference you know all of the players you could kind of sense that they felt that way too and then ben came out and you know all the emotion that he showed i had asked him you know what what does steelers nation mean to you what is this fan base and he got very choked up and you could just see i think that was kind of a theme that was i've been talking about this the last you know couple of days here since this news broke but you really kind of sensed the emotion. Like those last three games, the post-game press conferences, you could sense it from him. And it was something that also when we talked with him uh, after the Chiefs game, um, he kind of talked about, you know, passing the Steelers' legacy down, what it meant. And this is a moment that will stick out in my mind, but he kind of talked about, you know, He's going to, he passed the torch along to Cam Hayward and said, you know, after the game, hey, it's your turn now to – carry on this legacy to carry on what it means to be a Steeler to instill that. And we'd heard from, you know, Ben throughout the season, you know, he always points to, you know, the Rooney way and making sure younger players really understand that, but it was really emotional. And then when Cam Hayward came in right after Ben did into that press conference room, someone asked him about it and you just saw how choked up Cam Hayward got. I mean, this is a quarterback. This has been a leader of this team. I mean, again, we talked to all the rookies too. We talked to Najee Harris. We talked to Pat Fryermuth. Again, 
Roethlisberger was a guy they watched growing up pretty much their entire careers, let alone thinking that they would ever play with this guy. And now they're getting that wisdom. They're getting that knowledge passed down of, hey, this is how we do things here. This is why we are the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he's kind of, you know, it it was emotional seeing him get choked up and seeing Cam Hayward get choked up in those moments because, you know, they knew and pretty much everybody knew that it was kind of coming to an end. It was just going to be a matter of if not, you know, when, when it would be. It, right. And I think that's the thing. And, and again, it goes down to, like you said, those guys, you know, Cam Hayward, when he was in high school, uh, Ben Roethlisberger was throwing the ball, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's great. That's crazy to think about. Uh, and, and again, like you said, my question to Ben on on the, on that day was was, you know, hey, like you realize all the the high school players in, in, in were not were, were born after he started his time with the Steelers. That's crazy to think about. You're like, whoa, wait a second. Literally everybody who's playing high school football now has not is not is not older than your NFL career. And so everyone has that knowledge of that's that's who defined Western Pennsylvania football, and which is one of the biggest you know bellies of talent in the country or our most most talented group areas for people to recruit from in the country with the history of quarterbacks and special players that have come from it so uh, you know there's certainly that legacy but uh, you know also like you said passing it on you know with Ben Roethlisberger he didn't try to jump in and be a leader right away it wasn't until like 2008 where he went until he started uh, you know making his first locker room speeches you know there was a there was a Ravens game early in that season where the Steelers are down multiple scores and he goes into halftime and he tells hey he talks to the offense he says hey they our fans are booing us we can't take that and the defense has saved us so many times now it's time for us to save them and then it lead he, he leads a huge comeback in that game and that was like the first part of him finally stepping into the leadership role that was already there from James Ferrier and Troy Polamalu and Casey Hampton and all these other guys that had been there. Um, and then over the years, you saw him kind of step into that role. And granted, sure, there's questions about like, you know, could he have been better in this situation or that situation? Sure. But again, he's not perfect, but he did have all those legendary moments. And you saw in these final years, especially this year, Jenna, you know, we've been, we were at several practices all throughout training camp. We saw how much effort he was putting in to get Najee Harris to buy into what it meant to to be a Pittsburgh Steeler and to buy into, hey, these are the things that you got to do here. You got to do this. You got to do that. Trying to get, because he wants to see. And again, this is the reciprocation we're talking about. The Steelers put so much into this man. They could have, they could have won. You know, they, they could have gotten rid of him years ago. They could have let let him go when he had both of the, the scandals that involved that involved sexual harassment in his earlier in, in his earlier playing days. They could have cut ties with him, you know, after like 2018 or so. They could have said, hey, you know what? We're not going to sign you to another extension. We're going to start our, our remaking of our, our finding a new quarterback then and there. But they always banked on him. And even this year when it was obvious he didn't have it you didn't see them saying hey mason we're going to give you a shot they said no ben you go out there and you're going to finish it your way and i think you saw that trust in him created trust in them and he's like you know what not only am i going to do that i'm going to try and pass on the best that i can to whoever comes after me for the, that are going to be the leaders of the team and cam hayward he's been a leader like you know he's he was drafted in 2000 in 2011 he knows what, what it means to be a Steeler, but people like Najee, people like Pat Fryermuth, who Ben Roethlisberger also worked a relationship with, those are the guys that now they'll be able to play next year and they'll be able to say, wow, like seven's not here. That's crazy. And I think that's something special that can't be measured. Yeah, and you just look at kind of, you know, it's the end of an era and the start of a new one in the sense that what Roethlisberger was trying to pass down to those guys. And I think, like you said, too, we are going to see those leadership jumps from those rookies because of what Ben Roethlisberger did, because of the time he spent with them, because of, you know, the way that he worked with them, the trust that he put into them, because that's a, you know, I feel like we talked with those rookies so much about that all season long. You know, what does it mean to have a guy like Ben trusting you? What does it mean to be able to work with him? And they looked up to him and they admired his game. They admired his leadership. They admired what he did for this team so much that it's going to improve their game. So it's kind of that ripple effect where, you know, I think we're going to see, you know, amazing things from these guys because of what Ben did with them and how he worked with them and how he, you know, took time, you know, on, you know, we would see some days Ben didn't practice on Wednesdays, that veterans day off, but yet there would be days he was out there working with Friar move saying, Hey, you know, this is how I see it break down this route and go this way, do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw those little type of things that for those younger guys makes all the difference in the world. And again, you talk about carrying on the Steelers legacy, but that is one of the ways he's going to do it. It, It's certainly, uh, that's, that's what, that's what he's, that's what he's always been about. 
I just, I, again, I, I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of emotion that Steelers fans are going to continue to have thinking about Ben Roethlisberger. A lot of people are posting highlights of Super Bowl 43 of his, of his game winning toss against the Packers in 2009, when he hit Mike Wallace in the corner of the end zone uh, of Antonio Brown, catching it at the goal line, extending it over the Ravens. Uh, Ben's had so many moments like that. And I think that that's where, that's where you look back and you say, man, like that, that was something special. If you lived to watch, to enjoy throughout throughout that career, that was something special that you got to watch in not just Pittsburgh sports history, but all of sports history. And yes. I, I, it's certainly a, a definition of an era of Pittsburgh Steelers football. Well, Jenna, we got to talk about football that is going to be played this weekend. The Steelers don't play, um, but there are four teams who do. It's going to be a big, big weekend of games. We're going to pick who we think is going to win, get a little bit deeper into our picks this week, considering it's the conference championship weekend but before we do that we got to talk to our friends at built bar it's the new year's so that means new year's resolutions and if yours is about getting fitter eating healthier make sure you include built bar in your plan built bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or maybe even better than a candy bar because built bar makes it easier to stick to your new year's resolution it tastes so good that you'll want to eat it unlike those protein bars that can be chalky waxy or just downright nasty if you want to eat healthy you can it, it, it often gets so boring by week three. You're saying it's not worth it. Where's the chocolate? Well, good news. Built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, but they only have 130 calories, only four grams of sugar and four net carbs and pack 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the average candy bar that has around 240 calories, 30 grams of, of, of sugar and so and dozens of net carbs. That's a ton of problems that, that you're going to face if you're trying to if you're trying to get healthy. So go find your secret stashes where you keep your snacks, throw out all the junk food and replace them with built bars. And the good news is that you'll have so many flavors to choose from. If you go to built.com right now, you'll find they have peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, double chocolate, mint brownie and so many more. Built.com built, built is often releasing new flavors too. So check them out at built.com to see what's what's available. And if you go right now to built.com, you can use a promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your next order of Built Bars at built.com. Again, that's LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. And back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, um, here with Jenna Harner from Channel 11 WPXI. Uh, we're, we're continuing our show here, but we want to flip it to from Ben Roethlisberger talk to looking at what's going on in the conference championship round. Now, Jenna, um, last week, I believe you did. I think I believe you picked the Bengals. I pick, I think we both picked uh, we both picked the Bills. And we and I think did you pick the Rams or the Bucks? Because I, I picked the Rams. I know I picked the Rams. I th- I'm almost positive I picked the. Uh, I don't. I think I, picked, <laughs> I definitely think I picked the Rams because I know I picked against the spread. Okay, so then yeah, so then you had the perfect. Well, you almost had the. You, you were three and one last week. I was two and two, yeah. um, because uh, I I would know I was actually one and three because I had I had the Titans, I had the Bills, and I had the Packers, and the Rams. The Rams still almost gave it up. I was. But- <laughs> I'm still I'm still stressing about that game. I'm sitting there like, how can you fumble four times? Um, four! Oh my god, it was one of lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts and feelings. <laughs> but let's look at let's look at this situation here. Two rematches that we've seen. The first of which, AFC. We saw these teams meet earlier in the season. The Chiefs, the Bengals, three o'clock kickoff in Arrowhead Stadium. Now, the Chiefs. They have looked really good in these playoffs. They have they, they they started slow against the Steelers, and then they've put up 42 points in two straight games. Um, they had the amazing 13 second comeback from Patrick Mahomes last week. That kind of stuff seems like stuff of magic. But the Bengals did beat them in Week 17, but it was in Cincinnati, and it came down to a last second field goal. Jenna, looking at this game, what is your key? That, the, that both teams have to be looking at here. What is going to determine who pulls this game out? Uh, Cincinnati's offensive line. That is, where, uh, that is where I'm at because you allowed your quarterback to take nine sacks. Nine times? Not the greatest, one of the best gifts ever. <laughs> nine sacks and they lost. That's an unreal statistic. I mean, obviously, when you throw three interceptions, that's going to trump nine sacks any day. Of course it is. 
The Chiefs are a much better team. I've said coming in, I didn't think the Titans were a true number one seed. It came down to the fact that they beat the Chiefs earlier in the season when the Chiefs were three and four. But I do think if the Bengals' offensive line can pull things together and protect their quarterback, especially against a guy like uh, Melvin Ingram, yeah, they're going to find some success. If you allow Joe Burrow to be able to throw the ball and not take hits and not deal with a lot of pressure – he succeeds, which they did a pretty decent job. I remember, or I think I remember the last time these two teams played. It's very hard also to beat us the same team twice. Yes. So, I mean, it's hard, obviously, to count the Chiefs out the way that they're playing. But I think what I keep remembering about that week 17 game was the coaching in particular from Kansas, or excuse me, from Cincinnati at the end. The clock management there, they didn't allow. How do you beat Patrick Mahomes? You don't allow him to have the ball with 13 seconds or a minute or whatever to go. <laughs> that's how you win. And that's what the Bengals found week 17. And that's why they were able to win in that game. I just think the Chiefs right now are playing too well. But for me, it's going to come down to the offensive line because if you give Joe Burrow time to throw, he is going to make you pay. Jamar Chase made a lot of that Chiefs secondary look silly. And if Burrow has time to hit Chase, I think he might do that again. But I got to go with the Chiefs in this one. And, you know, I know people don't want to hear it, but and it's weird because I, I wonder too do Steelers fans want the Bengals or do Steelers fans See, want the Chiefs? I was talking about this on Wednesday with Tony Cerrito. And I think Steelers fans are crazy if they if they say, oh, I, I'm rooting for the Bengals because I'm tired of the Chiefs already. Are you crazy? Are you the crazy? Fa- like the fans of the Bengals who threw trash at Ben Roethlisberger as he was being carted off on because of his – with Ben Vontaze Murphy injured him? You want to root for that franchise? Are you out of your mind? That's where I'm at with this. I'm like, listen, go, go do your thing. Go have fun and go root for the Bengals. But know that they don't like you and then that all you're doing is joining – Chiefs fans, you at least tolerate them. And, hey, they beat you in the playoffs – this year, I understand some people may be sore about that, but you know what? They didn't beat you maliciously. Like, you know, they were like, hey, we're just a better team than you this year. Have, have fun. You've beaten us in the playoffs before. We know the pain, so now we're just dishing it back. There's there was at least a give and take there. The bang the Bengals have been just have just been have been dirty. They've done lots of things over the years. Their fans have shown what they think of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't understand how Steelers fans can side side with them in this situation. I also think that this game comes down to the offensive line, like you said, but I also think it comes down in a different way, too. If you looked at last game, Joe Burrow was phenomenal. He threw 446 yards, 30 of 39 for four touchdowns and zero interceptions. I don't think he's going to do that a second time. No. What's going to have to happen is Joe Mixon's going to have to get involved, and that didn't happen last time. He had 12 carries for 46 yards. Joe Mixon is a guy, they pay him money to be a guy who can carry the load and sort of keep that balanced offense. And when you when you see that that situation there, that the, the Bengals were able to get like four scoring drives in a row between the end of the first quarter to the start of the third quarter. That like like if you're gonna do that, you're gonna need to do that on the ground more because I'm not so sure that Joe Burrow is gonna be in a situation where the Chiefs now they have some more tape on him. They faced him before. Now Andy Reid and that defense, they're gonna be scheming up ways to say, okay, now we're gonna take away the things that you like to do. We're gonna force you to do things that you don't like to do and see how you respond in those situations. And hey, maybe Joe Burrow builds his legend and overcomes him and sweeps Patrick Mahomes in the season. I just don't think that's gonna happen. I really felt that Bills team was the best team. In these playoffs, they had a defense. Josh Allen was phenomenal. Uh, they they had weapons, and somehow the Chiefs found a way to knock that team out. I can't see a team that that won with 13 seconds left, getting into field goal range. I can't see that team coming back, you know, stay staying at home because they've been home throughout the playoffs, and then losing to the to the Bengals coming on the road. And I think the Bengals they've done a remarkable job. They deserve all the credit for getting there, but. I just have the Chiefs winning this one. I think it will be close and interesting, but I think you're going to see Joe Burrow make some mistakes late, and it'll be. But you know, for the Bengals fans, you'll have nothing to hang hang your hat on or hang your head over because this was an amazing season for you. Yeah, and this was again they got that monkey off their backs. We got the first playoff win. Hey, we got a second playoff win. We're in the AFC Championship yep. with a uh, you know second year quarterback who missed a decent chunk of his rookie year. There's a lot of brightness to this future for the Bengals, and I've said I'm like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are going to be a (laughs) P-R-O-B-L-E-M in the AFC and the AFC North for years to come. It's going to be a problem. But on the other side, the NFC, we both agree the Chiefs are going to win here. Now, this is going to be interesting. This is a part three. It's a, it's a rat, it's a matchup. But these two being divisional opponents, the Rams and the 49ers, they faced each other twice. Now, during the, during the season, the Niners actually swept the Rams. 
And mm -hmm. that's an interesting situation. They blew him out 31 to 10 in the first matchup. Then in the second matchup, when the Rams could have kept one, gone into the playoffs on a six game win streak, but two could have knocked the Niners out of the playoffs. They could, I mean, if they win that game, the night the Niners don't, don't make it. You look at that situation, you're like, man, you allowed a 17 point comeback. They were up 17 to nothing, and then the Niners came back. Is there a sense that, that the Niners are a team of destiny right now with the weird? I mean, they won on a blocked punt essentially last week against Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau Field and in and, and, and beating beating the, the Packers again. Um, is that team of destiny something that, that they're gonna they, they can cling on to in this situation, or do the Rams just by law of averages they're a very good team? They shouldn't lose three times in a row to the Niners, right? That you know, this is so. I this game picking this game, I think this might be the hardest game that we picked all season long, just because it's one of those you don't really know what's going to happen. You feel like you have a feel where it's like, all right, man, the Niners are riding the hot hand. They looked really great. They were able to do what they did, shut down Aaron Rodgers. Was it them shutting down Aaron Rodgers, or was it Aaron Rodgers just you know? not making some passes. He Choking. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. As, <laughs> I, as I fix this unintentionally. Yes. Was it that, or was it that? And then you look at the Rams. It's like, okay, they had another big lead. Everyone was like, Oh God, Falcons 28 to three. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. And sure enough, that was exactly what happened. It felt way too close for comfort. You know, I, I think the Rams are clearly going to make ball security a huge thing this week. I think also, the Niners are just going to kind of keep doing what they're doing because, again, they kind of snuck into the playoffs. They weren't supposed to be here. And, hey, look at where we are. We were a wild card team. We're moving on. We're moving up. We know what it takes to win. I keep going back and forth because I just feel like the Rams are the better team, but then it's like the Niners just have so much momentum. I think this one this one feels like it's going to be a lot closer than – I, not that Chiefs Bengals isn't going to be close, but I think this one is going to be a very back and forth and back and forth kind of thing. Come down to the wire. There's going to be some turnovers. It might not be the prettiest thing, but at the end of the day, Matthew Stafford. Also, you talk about getting monkeys off their back. Matthew Stafford getting wins in the playoffs, finding success. And oh, that throw to Cooper Cup, those throws to Cooper Cup. Whenever I say I'll throw to Cooper Cup, like my goodness. When you have weapons like that, it's very hard. And I think Von Miller has really also started to fit into that defense well and is looking like the Von Miller of old. I'm going with the Rams, but uh, I just I, I don't feel comfortable like definitively saying either team in this one. No, I feel you. It's uh, it, you know, it's it's a it's a stressful again. The Niners swept the Rams. I mean, who would have yeah. thought that that would have been a thing this year? And that's a they needed both of those games to make the playoffs. Those were important wins for them. But like you said, or I think you said about the Chiefs earlier, they're playing the Rams are playing a little bit of different football now. Even though that 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 that, that loss in Week 18 was just a few weeks ago, the way that they 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 established a lead against the Buccaneers, they did give up that lead. But Matt Stafford, that throw that you were talking about at the end of the game when he hit Cooper Cup. You have Indominus Sue and a blitzing cornerback, both unimpeded in his face, about to crush him. And Stafford just unlaunches that perfect bomb to cup to get them into field goal range. And to be fair, it wasn't on Stafford that they were in that position. Uh, no. You know, there was there was one there was a bad snap that went past him that was or that was early. Uh, Cam Akers fumbled twice, and Cooper Cup fumbled once. And no. and Matt Stafford didn't allow that moment to like. You know, to weigh on him and made the big play that helped win the game in the end. And to me, that shows maturity. That shows he is more than what people have said he is. That appeal, you know, I mean, including myself, you know, coming from the Lions, I'm like, I'm not sold that this guy really is all that. I understand that he's been playing for the Lions and that he's had some impressive moments when he was the Lions and that he's put up nut yards and he has a big arm. But I, I need to see him actually do it. And that was a moment where he did it, where he stood up to a, a team with an aggressive defensive front, with a talented defense, and made it happen. So for that reason. I'm saying that Matt Stafford and the Rams pull this one out. It's going to be close. Division playoff games usual are between two, 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 excuse me, two divisional opponents, not the divisional round, of course, the conference championship, but two divisional opponents playing each other. It's going to be close. It's going to be good. But so we're both in a, we're both in agreement this week. It's, yeah. it's Chiefs and Rams in the Super Bowl. That would be an exciting matchup between two teams that have talented quarterbacks, loaded weapons, and defenses that are that have playmakers all around them. It's going to be a fun weekend for sure. Last week was the greatest divisional round weekend of all time in watching the NFL. What's this weekend going to be? 
we need it. I just need this to carry over. I can't have two let down games. Like we just, we can't, we need that momentum. Talk about right momentum. We need it to keep going. We do. Jenna, thanks so much for joining us here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. You're always great to have here. Let people can find you, follow you and get more of your work. Well, Chris, thank you so much, as always, for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11, Instagram, Jenna underscore Harner, um, and WPXI, a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm actually going to be going to the Super Bowl uh, out in L.A. to uh, cover it and give you some Steelers stories out there. I think we lost Jenna there on the feed there. Hey, so guy, Channel 11 for all those fun things. Okay. Well, we lost, we lost you in the middle of your, in the middle of your explanation there, Jenna. I do apologize. Um, but, uh, but we do, but do follow, do follow what Jenna doing at Jenna Harner 11 on Twitter. Uh, do, do, uh, do check out what they're doing on channel 11 WPXI. You can go to WPXI.com to check out their channel, wherever you are in the country. Jenna Harner does amazing work. I'm Chris Carter, of the lockdown Steelers podcast. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter critiques. You can check out my work here on the lockdown Steelers podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google podcast, uh, Odyssey and YouTube. Jen is now messaging me that she definitely froze. So that's a funny way to end the show, but we thank you so much for checking us out. Do check us out. Leave us a five-star review on Apple podcast. It's a big help out. Thanks again for checking out the Locked On Steelers podcast. Be back on your screens and in your ears Sunday night going into Monday morning, recapping the conference championship weekend and keeping you up to date on your Pittsburgh Steelers.